Recovery is possible. 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 Recovery dialogues and sober stories. Welcome to this week's episode of Recovery Dialogues and Sober Stories, where we continue to confirm and maintain that recovery is not a destination, but a journey. Today we discuss the often interconnected issues of trauma and addiction. Join us as we delve into the importance of understanding this connection and the significance of trauma-informed care. Trauma is a pressing public health concern that stems from emotionally injurious experiences, such as violence, abuse, neglect, loss, disaster, and war. Behavior health service delivery that is efficient and effective requires a holistic strategy for dealing with trauma. Trauma-specific evaluation and care, as well as general public awareness and preventive efforts, are all part of this strategy. A trauma-informed approach is essential when helping those who have been through traumatic events. This is because if traumatic experiences aren't dealt with, they might increase a person's risk of developing substance abuse issues and mental health problems or exacerbate existing conditions into a state of perpetuity. The behavior health field is working on a new paradigm that takes a trauma-informed approach. This approach can also be used in additional areas that unpredictably have either a favorable or unfavorable effect on a person's ability to recover from traumatic events. A framework has been created to help systems talk to one another, make the connection between trauma and behavioral health issues, and learn how to become trauma-informed. Survivors of trauma have shared stories about their road to recovery, shedding light on the essential role that traumatic events play in the lives grappling with mental and substance use disorders. Therefore, integrating a trauma-informed approach into addiction treatment allow providers to carefully consider the residual effects of trauma and the weight of its impact on their clients' lives and lifestyles. This makes implementing a trauma-informed strategy essential for meeting the varied needs of people with addictions and their families in a nuanced, comprehensive, all-encompassing, and holistically effective manner. Additionally, this approach enables organizations to better support their clients, staff, and individuals in recovery. We have a fantastic lineup of guests on the podcast today. First is John Resch, co-founder and chief services officer of Centra Modern Recovery, which provides virtual health management tools, expert counseling, and psychoeducational content. John is a licensed interventionist and addiction counselor who helps families navigate the labyrinth of substance abuse and mental health issues. Next, we have Blair Nicole, a global PR firm CEO, therapist, and enthusiastic mental health advocate with an MA in counseling psychology. She helps clients through trauma therapy and addiction rehabilitation. Blair strives to foster a more compassionate and understanding world and break down stigmas surrounding mental health. Finally, Doi Gu Balan is a licensed psychotherapist and author specializing in intergenerational trauma. She has co-authored Rewrite, a trauma workbook of creative writing and recovery in our new normal. In Rewrite, Doigu inspires survivors to rewrite their trauma narrative using writing prompts and real-world coping strategies. So, let's get the discussion started. 
John, could you please explain the concept of trauma and how it may manifest in the context of addiction and mental health issues? Trauma is an emotional response to a distressing or disturbing event or series of events. It can result from experience such as a physical or sexual abuse, neglect, accidents, natural disasters, violence, or any situation that overwhelms an individual's ability to cope. The effects of trauma can manifest in various ways and have long-lasting effects. It significantly impacts mental and emotional well-being, disrupting a person's sense of safety, trust, and control. This can lead to a range of psychological responses. In regard to trauma and addiction, addiction is a common manifestation of trauma. Many individuals turn to substances or addictive behaviors to cope with distressing emotions and memories associated with their traumatic experiences. While these provide te temporary relief and escape, they can create additional problems and distress in the long run. Trauma and mental health. Um, trauma can contribute to the development of mental health struggles such as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, depression, anxiety disorders, and disassociative disorders. These challenges arise as individuals navigate the lasting impact of their traumatic experiences, including intrusive memories, flashbacks, emotional dysregulation, and difficulties in forming and maintaining healthy relationships. It's important to understand that not everyone who experiences trauma will develop addiction or mental health struggles, but there is a clear correlation between trauma and these challenges. Recognizing these connections is crucial for effective treatment and support. Doigu, could you please provide more information on the effects of trauma on the brain and body and how it may potentially contribute to addiction? From a behavioral perspective, trauma experiences change the way our brains process fear and alters the way we perceive our environment. The part of the brain that processes emotions, including fear, the amygdala, becomes overactive during traumatic events and can lead to worsening anxiety and hypervigilance. This can then lead to an inability to regulate our emotions and sense of control. Constantly being in a state of alarm can also damage the prefrontal cortex, resulting in a diminished ability to make healthy decisions. These functional and structural changes then can interfere with our ability to build and maintain secure, meaningful, trusting relationships. Biologically, hyperarousal is associated with increased inflammation in the body. Chronic illnesses such as high blood pressure and weakened immune responses are also associated with trauma and addiction. Substance use and addiction are often connected to dysregulated reward pathways as the ability to feel good and then feel just normal are blunted. The numbing experiences in trauma can be similar, requiring the use of more substances and feeding to the, into the cycle of addiction. Blair, could you please elaborate on the prevailing social perspectives toward addiction and trauma and how these viewpoints could potentially influence the treatment and recovery process for individuals struggling with these issues? The societal attitudes towards addiction and recovery and trauma are shifting, but not fast enough. Although many people have woken up to the idea that addiction and trauma are real, there's still so much misinformation and misunderstanding around these topics that really can only be changed through education. In addition to the misinformation, the societal judgment and negative stereotypes attached to these experiences can create feelings of shame, guilt, isolation, making it so much more difficult for individuals to seek help and support. The fear of being stigmatized can discourage people from reaching out for treatment, keeping them trapped, hindering their access to care, and perpetuating a cycle of self-blame and avoidance. John, when it comes to individuals who have endured trauma and are grappling with addiction or mental health issues, caregivers and loved ones play a crucial role in offering support, but what exactly can they do to provide the most effective assistance? Supporting individuals who have experienced trauma and are struggling with addiction or mental health challenges requires a compassionate and informed approach. 
Here are some key ways caregivers and loved ones can offer support. First, begin by educating yourself. Take the time to learn about trauma, addiction, and mental health, understanding the underlying causes, symptoms, and available treatments. It will help you provide informed support. Second, practice active listening. Create a safe and non-judgmental space for individuals to share their experiences and emotions. Validate their feelings and let them know that you are there to support them. You could also offer empathy and understanding. Recognize that trauma and addiction are complex issues and individuals may face unique challenges. Show empathy by putting yourself in their shoes and demonstrating compassion and understanding. Also encourage professional help. Encourage the individual to seek professional assistance from therapists, counselors, or addiction specialists. Help them find suitable treatment options and provide support in navigating the healthcare system. You can also foster a supportive environment. Create an atmosphere of trust and safety. Encourage open and honest communication and avoid blaming or shaming language. Encourage self-care and healthy coping mechanism. Also respect boundaries. Individuals who have experienced trauma may have specific boundaries and triggers. Respect their limits and be mindful of their comfort levels. Avoid pressuring or pushing them into situations that they may find overwhelming. Also avoid enabling behaviors. While providing support, avoid enabling addictive behaviors. Encourage healthy coping strategies and set appropriate boundaries to promote their recovery journey. Also, practice self-care. Caregivers and loved ones need to prioritize their well-being. Seek support for yourself through therapy, support groups, or self-care activities. Taking care of yourself allows you to provide better support for others. Also, encourage social support. Help individuals build a network of supportive relationships. Encourage their participation in support groups, therapy groups, or community programs where they can connect to others who have similar experiences. Lastly, be patient and celebrate progress. Recovery takes time and setbacks may occur. Offer patience and understanding and celebrate their achievements and progress. Remember that every individual's journey is unique and what works well for one person may not work for another. Tailor your support to their needs and seek professional guidance when necessary. Ultimately, your presence and understanding and unconditional support can significantly impact their recovery and healing process. Doigu, in what ways can substance use disorder treatment and addiction support services incorporate trauma-informed techniques to provide more effective care for patients? Education and building awareness of the prevalence of trauma and learning how to recognize signs of the survival stances of flight, fight, or freeze will support clinicians as they tailor patient-specific treatment. Goals of care should include meeting the needs of the individual and reducing the risk of re-traumatization while addressing past traumatic experiences. Trauma-informed practices focus on safety empathy, and earning patients' trust while teaching them strategies of regulating their nervous systems. Listening calmly with patients and an accepting demeanor will foster a strong therapeutic bond where difficult emotions and untold stories can be processed. Blair, can you provide some insight into your approach when dealing with patients who have gone through traumatic events and are currently on the path to recovery. When I'm working with a client who's experienced trauma and is also recovering from addiction, my approach really depends on the severity of the addiction. If their addictive behavior is life-threatening, then we would address that first through behavioral interventions, safety planning, a sobriety plan, possibly moving them to a higher level of care depending on what's going on. Safety would be the first priority. But For the vast majority of people experiencing trauma and addiction, that really wouldn't be necessary unless the behavior is life-threatening. For most people, I would treat the addiction just as I would any other coping mechanism, because that's exactly what it is, a coping mechanism that completely makes sense in the context of what the client has experienced. I've found that treating the trauma first providing a safe space for the client to feel their deeply guarded feelings, and then teaching them to self-regulate will naturally lead to improvements in the addiction over time. 
And of course, with any client, boundaries are always key. John, could you kindly elaborate on the potential correlation between adverse childhood experiences and subsequent addiction or mental health issues? Certainly. Adverse childhood experiences or ACEs are traumatic experiences occurring before age 18, such as physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, neglect, household dysfunction, or witnessing violence. There is a strong connection between ACEs and subsequent addiction or mental health struggles. Here's how they are interrelated. ACEs can lead to a heightened vulnerability to addiction and mental health issues later in life. Traumatic experiences during childhood can disrupt healthy development, impair coping mechanisms, and impact emotional regulation. ACEs can also alter brain development, particularly in areas responsible for stress response, emotional regulation, and decision-making. These changes can contribute to difficulties in managing emotions, impulse control, and self-regulation. It increases the risk of addiction and mental health challenges. Individuals who experience ACEs may develop maladaptive coping mechanisms to deal with their traumatic experiences, including turning to substances to numb the emotional pain or self-medicating underlying mental health symptoms. ACEs often lead to emotional and psychological distress, including symptoms of depression, anxiety, PTSD, and low self-esteem. These psychological struggles can contribute to the development of addiction as individuals seek relief or escape from their emotional pain. ACEs co- often co-occur with other risk factors such as poverty, family dysfunction, or community violence. These overlapping factors can compound the risk of addiction and mental health challenges. It's essential to recognize the impact of ACEs on individuals and provide trauma-informed care that addresses both the addiction and the underlying trauma. Treating the root causes of addiction and supporting individuals in healing from childhood trauma is crucial for sustainable recovery and improved mental well-being. Doigu, what measures can we take to understand better the intricate relationship between trauma, addiction, and mental health struggles, particularly among communities that are often marginalized and underserved. Furthermore, how can we develop effective strategies to address these complex issues equitably and inclusively? Previously, mental health clinicians were thought that any patient could be cared for by any provider that empathy and compassionate connection would allow for adequate healing. We now are much more sophisticated about the value of cultural competency, lived experience, and the need to dismantle structural barriers to best serve our patients. It is painfully evident that marginalized communities have higher rates of trauma, addiction, and mental health issues, coupled with seriously deficient access to care. The cause of these systemic discrepancies are complex and include reimbursement inequity, stigma, and racism. Fundamental to addressing these issues is access. We talk a lot about the need to recruit and retain providers in rural and underserved areas, which can only be done if appropriate support and funding mechanisms are in place. Trauma-informed care must be more widespread and the education of the communities of options for care as well as available support services. As specialty mental health and addiction practitioners are trained and become increasingly available for these communities, collaborative care between primary care and mental health, even if done on a remote telehealth platform, will significantly improve lives and clinical outcomes. Blair, could you please elaborate on how self-compassion and self-care play a crucial role in addiction and trauma recovery? If shame is the fuel that keeps addiction going, then self-compassion is the antidote. So many people suffering from addiction are running on an operating system of shame and self-invalidation. And often that shame and invalidation is reinforced with the messages they get from society. By helping individuals cultivate a supportive and non-judgmental attitude towards themselves, it leads to increased resilience, motivation, 
ability to self-regulate, and just overall well-being throughout their journey of recovery. I want each guest to weigh in for this final question. I'll start with you, Blair. In your opinion, what methods can we employ to explore further and tackle the intricate, multifaceted, and interpenetrating links of trauma and addiction to provide more effective support to individuals in recovery? To better understand the interplay between trauma and addiction, it's essential to promote interdisciplinary collaboration between researchers, clinicians, and community organizations. Currently, it's not uncommon for there to be a divide amongst these groups which can slow research and innovation. I also think there's a huge need to do more research and push more trauma-informed recovery approaches such as EMDR and IFS in addiction recovery. What do you think, John? Great question. One important step is promoting interdisciplinary collaboration. It's essential to bring together researchers, clinicians, and professionals from various fields such as psychology, neuroscience, social work, and addiction medicine. By combining their expertise, we can obtain a more comprehensive understanding of how trauma and addiction influence each other and find innovative approaches for treatment and recovery. Longitudinal studies are also vital in this research endeavor. These studies follow individuals over extended periods, allowing researchers to track their experiences with trauma, addiction, and recovery. By observing how these factors evolve over time, we can gain valuable insights into long-term effects of trauma on addiction vulnerability and the effectiveness of different recovery approaches. Another critical aspect is evaluating trauma-informed treatment. We need to assess the, the impact and effectiveness of treatment approaches that recognize the role of trauma in addiction. This includes examining trauma-focused therapies, mindfulness-based interventions, and integrated care models. Through rigorous evaluation, we can identify the most effective strategies and continually improve the quality of care. By understanding the neurobiological mechanisms underlying the connections between trauma and addiction is also essential. Advancements in brain imaging and genetics offer opportunities to explore how trauma affects the brain, including neural pathways, reward systems, and stress responses. By unraveling these mechanisms, we can develop targeted interventions that address the specific neurobiological changes associated with trauma and addiction. It's really crucial to adopt an intersectional perspective in our research efforts. Trauma and addiction can manifest differently among individuals from diverse backgrounds, such as different racial, ethnic, cultural, and socioeconomic groups. By considering these intersecting factors, we can develop more culturally sensitive and tailored approaches that address the unique challenges faced by marginalized communities. Incorporating the voices of individuals with lived experiences is also key. People who have personally gone through trauma and addiction can offer invaluable insights by involving them in research designs, implementation, and interpretation. We can ensure that our studies are relevant, practical, and truly reflective of the experiences and needs of those in recovery. Lastly, was we must prioritize knowledge dissemination and collaboration. Sharing, sharing research findings through academic publications, conferences, and public forums is essential for bridging the gap between research and practice. It's important that professionals in the field engage in continuous learning, dialogue, and collaboration to collectively advance our knowledge and improve the quality of care provided to individuals recovering from trauma and addiction. By embracing these approaches, we can continue to expand our understanding and develop a more effective interventions that address the complex and nuanced connections between trauma and addiction. Ultimately, this will help us better support individuals in their recovery journeys and promote lasting healing, health, and well-being. Finally, your thoughts, Doigu. In order to better serve individuals in recovery and continue to research and address the complex and nuanced connections between trauma and addiction, we must allow for increased recognition and awareness. By decreasing stigma, we can facilitate conversations regarding funding and support. None of this can be done without improving trust in healthcare systems and providers. 
research should be conducted within diverse populations and incorporate the recent learnings of the value of those with lived experiences. As we expand on the literature of evidence-based trauma-informed interventions, we must continue to educate our providers and the communities they serve. Thank you, panel guest, for shedding light on the intricate relationship between trauma and substance use disorders. Their valuable insights have demonstrated how trauma can play a causal role in addiction, how addiction can worsen the residual effects of traumatic experiences and co-occurring mental health conditions, and highlighting the significance of trauma-informed care in addiction and dual diagnosis treatment. By sharing their expertise and knowledge, they have reinforced the overarching theme of this show, which is that recovery is possible. I want to thank our sponsor, Wish Recovery, for their continued support in making this episode possible. Wish Recovery is a leading addiction treatment center that offers personalized care and evidence-based treatment options to help individuals achieve lasting recovery. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, we encourage you to visit Wish Recovery's website and explore their services. To stay up to date on future episodes of our podcast and to continue the conversation on addiction and mental health recovery, subscribe to our podcast and follow us on social media. Thank you for listening to Recovery Dialogues and Sober Story. Recovery is possible. 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 Recovery dialogues and sober stories.